everyone. First and foremost, I have someone to introduce you to. This is Pickles. I adopted her uh, a few weeks ago. I'm absolutely in love. And she's going to be joining me for today's workout and probably most workouts going forward. <laughs> She'll just be chilling on the couch, but there are a few times you'll notice that the video kind of stops and cuts when she gets a little riled up and I have to <laughs> redo it. So today I have another pyramid workout for you, just like the previous two I posted. This one will focus on core. So the structure is the same. Each round we add on. So round one is exercise one, then you rest. Round two is exercise one plus exercise two, then you rest. Round three, exercise one, exercise two, exercise three, rest and so on, building up to a sequence of six exercises. Your rest intervals are gonna be 30 seconds, and your work intervals are gonna be just a little longer, 35 seconds. Those extra five seconds are gonna account for transition time. For equipment, all you're gonna need is a heavy weight for one of the exercises. Everything else is body weight. I'm going to be using a 20 pound kettlebell, but you could use a dumbbell, a medicine ball, whatever works for you. It's just gonna be for Russian twists. As with all workouts, you wanna make sure you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body, modifying or stopping as needed. Um, I have two warm-ups on my channel as well as a cool down, which I will link to below. Also, if you're new to my channel, I don't play music in the background because I want you to be able to listen to whatever you like. So if you don't have a playlist or a TV show queued up, you might wanna get that going. And with all that said, let's get to the preview of the first exercise. How I'm gonna show you previews is when you're resting, I'll show you the preview for the next exercise. So I'm only gonna give you one at a time just so that you don't have to remember all six. And it's worth noting, I got comments on some of the previous two pyramids that some of you are not just going up the pyramid, but once you get to six, you're working your way back down. That is awesome. If you are looking for a longer workout, go for it. Okay, now with all that said, let's get to work. Okay, we are going to start with Russian twists, so grab your weight if you are choosing to use one. We're going to kind of balance on our tailbone, so I want you to roll your shoulder blades down your back so that your chest is nice and broad. Button your bottom two ribs together, and now start to shift back with the torso until your feet lift up off the floor. From here, you're going to twist side to side. And I want a deep twist, so really bring the weight to the outside of your hip. And it's not just your arms going around. I want your chest to twist too, so think of initiating the twist through your midsection. Now, if these get to be too much, you can always use a lighter weight. You could ditch the weight altogether, or you can put your heels lightly on the floor. You have 10 seconds to go. Okay, 30 seconds to rest, and I'm going to show you our second exercise. So we start back at the top with the Russian twist, but then we will add on those V up and overs. Now sitting in this position for two exercises back to back can start to bother the hip flexors. So I'm gonna give you lots of modification options if that is the case for you. So first off, in this Russian twist, if your hips bother you, I want you to cross one foot over the other, okay? It's gonna help a ton. So if you have crossed ankles, that is gonna be the best option I can give you to kind of relieve those hip flexors. You have 15 seconds to go. Make sure that you are not hunching your shoulders under the weight of that kettlebell or dumbbell, whatever you are using. So again, kind of slide your shoulder blades down your spine. Final few seconds. At the beeps, you will put the weight by your feet so that you can kind of bring, you have some visual to bring your feet up and over side to side. So it's like a V up and notice I have my fingertips lightly on the floor by my sides. Um, it might be better for you if you slide your hands back a little behind your hips or you might find it more comfortable to bring your fingertips sort of in front of you with straight arms. Find what gives you the best support but still challenges you. You wanna keep a long spine which means a long neck so try to keep your chin off of your chest especially when you lean back. Final few seconds. And rest. I'll show you exercise number three. Okay. 
Okay, we start at the top, Russian twists into those V up and overs, and then we will add on that thread the needle side plank pike. So you'll notice I'm crossing my ankles because I am starting to feel my hip flexors talk to me a little bit, and that is gonna help a lot. You have 15 more seconds to go with these, and then we put the weight down by our feet, and we're gonna go into those V up and overs. You got it, 10 seconds. All right, wait by your feet, bring both legs together to one side, and then you are gonna bring them up and over to the other side. It is not just the legs lifting and lowering, your torso is coming up to meet them. So you sort of extend out to a hollow hold, and then you bring your body up into a V shape. Chest is staying open, fingertips light. If you want a challenge, you can try to take your hands off the floor, reaching them in front of you. And if this one is bothering your hip flexors, I want you to do it with bent knees, okay? That's gonna help a lot. Final few seconds. We are gonna come into a side plank. I want you to mirror me. So you're gonna bring your left forearm down to the floor and I want you to stagger your right foot in front of left. As you thread the needle with that top right arm, you're gonna pike your hips up, rotating onto the balls of your feet. So at the top of this pike, notice my hips are square to the floor and then I drop my heels and rotate the hips open to the side as I go back into that side plank. This is not just an obliques exercise. You are gonna feel it in that bottom left shoulder as well. So let's make sure we're staying strong through that shoulder, pushing the floor away, nice long neck. And rest while I show you exercise number four. Okay, round number four. Now I want you to kind of think back to the previous three rounds. Have these Russian twists felt easy? If the answer is yes, maybe you grab a heavier weight for this round. Twisting side to side. Hip flexors are bothering you. Cross your ankles as I am doing. And make sure you're keeping a nice long spine. So picture you're kind of reaching the top of your head towards the back top corner of the wall behind you. Weight to the outside of the hips so your chest is facing the side. It is not just your arms swinging around. Final few reps here, and then we take it into those V up and overs. All right, now, if at this stage in the workout, your hip flexors are really yelling at you, I just want to throw out an option. You can skip these and do bicycle crunches instead, all right? If that feels better for your hips, just want to throw that out there because I know that that is a common complaint with core workouts like this. So I want you to have all the options. If you're looking for a challenge, notice I'm reaching my arms forward instead of tenting the fingertips on the floor for support. So maybe you try that to ramp it up a notch. Oop, that was short-lived, <laughs> going back to hands on the floor. We're gonna meet in that side plank. This time I want your right forearm down, mirror me. Right forearm down, take your top left foot, stagger it in front of the right foot. That staggered position is important because when you thread the needle and pike your hips up, you're coming to the balls of your feet and you wanna, be easy, you wanna easily be able to square the hips to the floor. If you need to modify these, put that bottom right knee down like a kickstand. Let's take it into those rolling crunches. So you lay on your side, bringing knees to elbows, and then you're gonna bring hands to tap heels, and then you roll to the other outer hip. So reaching fingertips towards your ankles and then onto the side. When you roll to the side, kind of roll to the side of your butt. Don't go straight onto the hip or it's gonna be very hard to get any bit of range of motion. Notice when I'm extending the legs out as I roll, I'm keeping them hovering off the floor. If possible, that is what I want you to do so that your core is really active throughout the entire movement. 30 seconds to rest, I will show you exercise number five. All right.
right, second to final round. They're getting longer and longer. We're just going to add on some slow mountain climbers to the end of this one. Russian twist, second to last time you'll see this. Lean back, long spine, and we twist side to side. I'm shocked at how well behaved my dog is being right now. <laughs> I actually got through the whole, filming the whole workout without too much of a ruckus from her. So thank you, Pickles. <laughs> we have 10 seconds to go here, and then we're going to take it into those V up and overs. All right, wait back down by your feet. It's not necessary. You could just put, move those feet up and over an invisible object too, but it's nice to have the visual. I want you to notice this round, how much work and how much weight um, is in your hands right now. So if your, weights are, if your hands are bearing a ton of weight, I want you to kind of lighten the grip. Maybe just come to fingertips or maybe you try a rep or two taking your hands off the floor, reaching them in front of you. Remember, when you extend back, think of coming into sort of a hollow body hold. And then as you come up, it's not just the legs lifting. You bring your chest up to meet the thighs. Whoop. All right. Side plank, left forearm down this time. Stagger that right foot in front of left. As you thread the needle with that top right arm, you pike your hips up into the air, rotating onto the balls of your feet. Rolling crunch is coming up, so lower down onto your hip. Your bottom hand is lightly on the floor for support when you do the side crunch. And then when you come to center, I want you to bring your hands in to touch your heels. You don't have to do that if you want to keep your elbows wide, fingers by the ears. That is an option too. If you want to advance these, instead of crunching the knees in towards your elbow, you could keep the legs straight. But I just figure after those V up and overs, you probably want to bend the knees, and I know I certainly do. At the beeps, make your way to your high plank. All right, high plank position, hands stacked under shoulders. And we're going to do slow mountain climbers. I want you to bring the knee in towards the same elbow. And I want you to go slow because what I care about in this one, that what I care about in this one is range of motion. So if you can, I want you to actually make physical contact. Knee touches elbow or get as close to actually touching your arm as you can. 10 seconds to go. So really pull that knee forward, try to tap the arm, step it back. <laughs> 30 seconds to rest, I will show you our final exercise. Okay, final round coming your way, and then you are done with this core pyramid, unless, of course, you are choosing to go back down the pyramid, in which case, more power, more power to you. Go for it. All right, Russian twist, 35 seconds. Bringing that weight to the outside of the hip. The twist is initiated through your midsection, so we don't just bring the shoulders and the arms around. Twist, twist. Staying long through the spine, so we're not hunching the shoulders. Any discomfort in the hip flexors, cross your ankles. If you want more of a challenge, you could even try straightening your legs for these last 10 or so seconds. V up and overs. Wait at your feet, bring both legs to one side of it. Really zip those inner thighs together. And you're lifting up and over. So it's like, it's like a regular V-up, just with that slight rotation side to side. To modify, give me a bend to your knees. To advance, reach your arms forward like I'm doing now. We'll see how many reps I last this time before I put those hands back down. Whoop, getting a little wobbly. And again, if your hands are on the floor, I want light fingertips. You have just a few seconds to go. So light fingertips, light fingertips. Side plank, right form comes down, mirror me. Right forearm down, take your left foot, stagger it in front of your right foot. And as you thread the needle with that top left arm, you pike your hips up, rotating the balls of your feet. 
Now, you might notice because you're rotating to the balls of the feet and then dropping the heels that your feet start sort of sliding back. Just shimmy them up closer to you so that they stay in relatively the same position. You have 10 seconds to go here. Rolling crunch is coming up next. Your three sex exercises in, you have three to go. I almost said three sex exercises. <laughs> that is not what I meant. <laughs> side, center, side, center. Remember when you extend back out, try to keep your legs hovering, but I don't want your legs so low that your back is peeling up to the ceiling. So maybe start with just extending them out to a 45 degree angle. And then if you feel good there, try going a little lower. Final few seconds here, and we'll make our way to a high plank. You have plank work to finish up this pyramid. High plank, slow mountain climbers. Hands stacked under shoulders, reach your legs long, draw one knee in, and again, I want you to make physical contact with that elbow or come as close to it as you are able to, okay? So really draw the knee forward. I do not care about the number of reps. I want you moving slow and continuous and focusing on that big contraction. Pull, pull, pull forward, step back. Hips are at shoulder height, so make sure you're not piking your butt up to the ceiling. Now, I want to see an active transition at the beeps. You're not going to break your plank. You're just going to march down to forearms and go into your jacks. March down onto those forearms. In your forearm plank, we are going to hop the feet wide, narrow, wide, narrow. Okay? Final 30 seconds of this workout. You got it. If this gets to be too much, I want you to hold in a plank, okay? Think active breaks, as I'm doing right now. Wide, narrow, wide, narrow. Now, just watching myself here, my hips could be a smidge lower. They are piked up a little bit. Make sure they stay right around shoulder height. Your legs are active in this as well, so squeeze your quads, squeeze your glutes. Final few seconds. Can you stay continuous right to the end? Out, in, out, in. You got it. And done. Awesome work. Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have one more of these pyramid workouts coming your way. It's going to be a total body workout. It is a challenge for sure that will hopefully be up next week. And if you are looking for a longer workout that maybe hits more muscle groups, uh, try doing this core workout with the upper body and the lower body pyramid. Do them all back to back. That would give you about a 45 minute long total body workout. Be an awesome way to get your sweat on. All right, I will see you next week.